Hey, what's going on, folks? It's Larry with Packmasters Dog Training. Here I have Sophia, my lovely daughter and assistant. Um, several years back, it's probably been five or six years now, I put out a video showing people how I teach clients the mechanics and the timing of the e-collar. Sophia was probably eight years old. It was very, very well received. Um, thousands of people responded to me how beneficial it was for them, especially trainers teaching their clients. But it was very basic and I didn't go into too much detail. So today, with all the things going on and all the videos out there and all the people that contact me and other trainers with issues when it comes to the e-collar, I wanna do that again, but maybe put out a little more detail so I can help clarify things even further for, for young trainers and dog owners, all right? So Sophie is gonna be helping me with that. Um, I have the sound box, so you guys can hear when I use the e-collar. Uh, let me hear. So you'll hear that whenever I'm using the e-collar. I'm gonna take my time and really break this down to try to explain to people at least how I do things, okay? Um, Sophie is going to be my dog. Can we use Sophie as your name or would you like a dog name? Uh, let's do a dog name. All right, what name do you wanna pick? D.O.G. D.O.G. Okay, so Sophia's name's going to be D.O.G. Okay, that's, she's the dog. I have a treat pouch here. If you look with my logo, beautiful new treat pouches that were given to me and made for me by my buddy Jason Furman out in Australia who sells a lot of great things. Thank you so much, Jason. I love these treat pouches and I can fit my big giant gorilla hands in them without a problem. That's rare. This treat pouch has never had dog food or dog treats in it, so it's filled with Skittles. So I'm literally going to reward Sophia to try to make it as realistic as possible with my trusty dog, D.O.G. here, okay? As I'm going along, I will talk about what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and break it down very simply, guys. And hopefully no one ever has to, to spend a lot of money and throw it away on bad e-collar training again. That, that's just my goal. I just want more and more people to understand, listen, this is the second greatest dog training tool ever created outside of the leash, okay? But unfortunately, it is still the most misunder understood and misused in my opinion and and it's got to stop okay the bad training the bad treatment of the animals it's got to stop so i'm going to try to make things a little more clearer now at least how i do it all right so a couple of things before you do any e-collar work let's get it very straight here i teach nothing with the e-collar let me repeat that i teach nothing with the e-collar everything is taught through positive reinforcement food uh, verbal markers, clickers. If you don't know what clickers and verbal markers are and positive reinforcement, then you're not ready to use e-collars, okay? You have to have a fundamental understanding of how dogs learn, how to teach, how to communicate clearly and teach the dog what you want, okay? So before any dog of mine or a client's ever gets an e-collar on, they must understand the basics very well. For one, they must know how to learn. They must understand the verbal marker or the clicker. Um, they also must know come, down, place, sit very well. Very, very well. And then we can implement the e-collar, but even then, the e-collar is not gonna be used to punish and correct, okay? The e-collar is going to be used to communicate what they already know. Later on, once the dog truly understands the meaning of the e-collar, the language of the e-collar, then you could use the e-collar to make everything the dog knows better, faster, sharper. Um, you can stop unwanted behaviors very, very successfully, very quickly without it becoming a very conflicted situation between handler and dog. But most of all, you can provide that off-leash freedom for your dog. That's the main reason why I use e-collars, to provide off-leash freedom for my dog and my client's dogs, okay? So those are the things I want everyone to understand before we ever attempt to put the e-collar on the dog. All right, so first thing we're gonna do with DOG, just like we do with any other dog, we wanna start in a place with as little as distractions as possible. Because remember guys, this is not about the obedience. This is about teaching the dog the meaning of the e-collar. I don't care about the obedience here. I prefer to do it on concrete or blacktop when possible, okay? 
in the grass, too many distractions. We want as little distractions as possible. So we have a leash on the OG here, right? Now what I want you to do, Sophie, is I want you to hold that in your hand and I'm gonna search for the level that you feel, the lowest level that you perceive in any way. When you feel anything, the slightest tingling, I want you to let me know, okay? And that's where we're gonna start working, all right? Now, when you do feel something, I don't want you to move it in your hand because just like on the dog, if she moves her hand, the next time she may not feel it at all or the sensation will be too high. We want it to be consistent across the board and we start at the lowest level the dog perceives, okay? So right now, I'm on a, on a one. I don't feel it. Okay, you just tell me when. I feel it. Okay, you feel that? Mm -hmm. Let me do it again. Is that too high or are you okay there? Uh, can you lower it a little bit? Yep. Do you feel that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that too high or is that good? That's good. Okay, so Sophia feels it on a number 12, okay? Most dogs on average feel it between a number six and seven, right around there. Doesn't matter the size or the breed. That's where most dogs feel it if you're making good contact. Again, you feel that okay? Okay, so now the dog shows us that it feels the e-collar at the lowest level perceived, right? It's going to give us some kind of sign that it feels it. That sign may be very, very subtle, very subtle. It may just be standing there breathing normally and then the mouth closes, it stops breathing. That's letting you know it feels something and don't know what it is. It may turn around and look at its butt thinking that there's something behind it. Again, it's going to be very subtle. The ear may twitch just a little bit. The eyes may blink. It may give you a little head twitch. Depending on where the e-collar is placed on the neck, you might see a little muscle pulsate. They're all different. Some dogs will show you nothing. We'll go into that on a later, on a later video, okay? So now, she feels it there. Again, the only thing I want to do is start teaching Sophia, the OG, I'm sorry, we want to start teaching the OG what that strange sensation means, guys, because the e-collar stimulation is completely foreign to a dog. They have no idea what that means. It's our job to teach them. We combine the stimulation from the e-collar with the leash and the verbal command to teach the dog what that means. So starting off with a lot of dogs, what I'll do is this. I don't want it to be a negative starting off. I want the e-collar to be as neutral as possible in the dog's world, okay? And I want it followed with a lot of positivity right from day one. So I may sit there with the dog. Now that I know the dog feels it, I might tap. Yes, reward, okay? I may tap. Yes, reward. I didn't realize I have to, have to feed you, okay? Tap, reward. You get what I'm saying? I'm not gonna give it to you there right now, okay? Tap, reward. Tap, reward. I may do that five or six times. Now, all of a sudden, the dog is feeling the stimulation from the e-collar. Total confusion, has no idea what it means, right? But every time it feels it, a reward follows best to start with a hungry dog very important so every time the dog feels even though it's like what is that something good follows I do that five six times ten times whatever now we're ready to start working right we're gonna first start working with the recall we're not teaching the recall with the e-collar the dog already has a fundamental understanding what here means so we're using that to start teaching the stimulation it'll look like this we're just hanging out right I have a little space from the OG. And Sophia, you're gonna just comply at this time and do what I'm asking, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press and hold the OG here. Yes. And then I'm going to reward, okay? So I pressed, I held the continuous button. I said the OG here. The second the OG turned to come my way, not when she got to me or halfway, the second she turned to come my way, I say yes, they know the marker word, and then when she got to me, I rewarded with the food reward. The reason why the marker, the verbal marker is so important, guys, when the OG turns and she hears yes, that bill speed, because she knows yes means, okay, something good is coming. Make sense? Let's do that again. Okay, so you're gonna just wander around a little bit. I press, the OG here, yes. I reach in, I give her a reward. That's simple, okay? That's one thing we do during the conditioning phase. 
Now, when I say conditioning phase, that means we're just teaching the dog the meaning of the stimulation. When I'm conditioning a dog, they, that may last anywhere from two days to five days to a week. Depends on the dog and how much time I have, okay? During that period, we're using the e-collar over and over and over, paired with a lot of rewards to teach the dog the meaning of the stimulation. One more time like that. So we have a little space. I press, the OG here, yes. I mark it and then I reach for a piece of food. Not at the same time, very important. Don't do all that at the same time. Yes, and then the hand goes in for the reward. Too many people do everything at the same time and the dog learns to respond to the visual cue, my hand moving, instead of the marker or the command, okay? Very important. Now, that's one way. The OG's giving me space, so that makes it easy, right? I'm just calling her to me. Now, a lot of dogs are going to stay close to your side, especially when you start doing this. We call that Velcro dog, right? So they're not going to give you space. That's when people start struggling. There's a couple different things we do. First of all, if the OG's right here, I don't need her to give me a lot of space. I can create space, and it looks like this. With the dog standing right in front of you, press the OG here, yes. Mark and reward. You understand what I'm saying? So you don't need a lot of space, you create space. Again, the dog's right here, press the OG here, yes. Mark and reward, you create your own space, okay? Now, another thing I talk about in my book, in my videos, is the turnabouts, going 180 degrees. That's where I don't use a command, I don't use a reward. I'm just teaching the dog to follow the stimulation. So it looks like this, we're walking, walk down my way, that, that, as I turn, I tap, okay? The dog's with me, gets up to my side, tap, tap, and I turn. When I'm doing that, there's no markers, there's no reward, there's no command. The dog's learning that when they feel the stimulation, just follow me. That's it, I'll show you one more time. We're walking, the dog's at my side, tap, tap, that's it, that's simple. There's no verbal communication there, okay? Again, very, very powerful tool. Now, let's say once again, the OG is at my side and she's not going to leave. Well, there's another thing I'm going to do to create some space and that's using our forward momentum. Again, I've talked about all this. I'm gonna show you the timing of it so you understand. So the OG is gonna be at my side and I'm gonna start moving. We're moving, I'm moving fast. I press the OG here. Yes, mark, and reward, okay? I'll show you coming this way so you guys can understand better. Okay, dog's at your side, not giving any space, go at a good pace, press the OG here. Yes, mark, reward, okay? Very, very simple, guys. You're creating that space. So what happens is when you're moving at a good pace together and you press the e-collar and you back up, the OG or your dog is already moving forward. So you're creating enough space to where you can give that recall and the dog's gotta turn and come to you. Very, very effective, okay? Again, this is all in the conditioning phase. Now, there's a fourth thing, I think it's the fourth thing that I do also. I like to use the e-collar without the verbal command. All of my dogs, including my clients' dogs, get a default response to the e-collar when there's no command, meaning, Let's say your dog's e-collar trained, it's off leash. You're someplace where there's a lot of noise. There's kids screaming or dogs barking or there's a train going by and your dog's not going to hear you, okay? What I teach my dogs that if they feel a tap tap with no command attached, that means turn and come to me. That's all that means. Very, very powerful for everyday dog owners, guys. And the way I teach that is very simple. It's common sense. Back up away from me, the OG. So when the OG's away from me, not paying attention, I don't say anything. I use very slight leash pressure and I just, yes, mark and reward, okay? Again, turn around. And this time I want you to hesitate, the OG, for about one or two seconds. Don't come to me right away, okay? So I get very light leash pressure, tap, tap, yes, mark and reward. So I'm not using a command there. I'm teaching the dog by helping with the leash that when you feel the tap, turn and come to me. 
and I'm going to mark and reward that, okay? So, we did a couple of things. We did where the dog is away from us, and I'm holding the continuous button and giving the command. Let's do it one time for a quick review. So, I got some space. I hold the OG here. Yes, mark and reward. Again, guys, this is all during the conditioning phase, right? The other thing is we're walking. Let's walk, walk, walk. No command, no reward. The third thing is we're going to use the momentum, right? We're walking fast. We're going at a good pace. We press the OG here. Yes, mark, reward, okay? The fourth thing, the dog's over there, not paying attention to me. Light, light leash pressure. Tap, tap, yes mark and reward okay that makes sense make sure you keep the dog in the picture too there and things like that okay beautiful camera lady all right okay guys so those are the four things that's where we're using the recall or the follow me now i'm also going to work on the place command because right from the beginning i want the dog not always to believe that it has to come to me when it feels the stimulation from the e-collar, okay? That's where a lot of people get stuck. So I'm gonna work on the recall, but I'm also gonna work on the go away from me, the place command. Again, the dog already knows the place command very well. This is gonna be very simple, so I'll go through it very fast. The dog knows the place command. The dog was taught the place command through positive reinforcement and knows it very well. So when I'm going to Im implement the e-collar, I'm gonna be right here. I'm gonna press the OG place. Yes, mark, reward, okay? And then the dog's free to go because I marked it. That's a release, that's an active release. Again, I'm not gonna do it from too far. I wanna be fairly close in the beginning. I'm gonna press the OG place, then the hand signal. Yes, mark, reward, okay? I start with the dog fairly close. I don't wanna go from too far away in the beginning. And then I hold the continuous button and as soon as the dog gets up there, the pressure from the e-collar goes off, we mark and reward. The other way I could do it is by giving the command first, right? D-O-G, place, tap, 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 yes, I reach in, I reward, okay? Let's show that again, right? D-O-G, place, tap, 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 yes, I reach in, I reward. The OG turns off the tapping when she gets up on the place board, okay? Now, a lot of people are going to say, what happens when you put the dog up there and you don't reward right away and the dog gets off? You know, do you, do you crank up the e-collar? No, I don't turn up the e-collar at all, ever, through the whole learning process, guys. Again, I don't care about the obedience here. I care about teaching the dog the meaning of the e-collar. That's why the dogs I train look the way they do with the e-collar, e including my own. So if I put her up there and she gets off, I'm going to say, uh-uh, that's my wrong marker, and I'm going to put her back up there. If she gets off 10 times, I'm going to say, uh-uh, I'm going to put her back up there. People are too quick to hammer with this tool, okay? Way too quick to hammer with this tool. Take your time, embrace the mistakes fix the mistakes and you're going to see the dog excel. I don't want the dog to have fear of getting off of the place board. I want the dog to be excited to be up there because good things happen, okay? It's that simple. That's the difference between someone who tries to elevate the dog and bring out the best and suppress the dog and just crush its spirit. My job is to shape the behavior, not the personality. I want to bring out the best in the dog okay not crush its personality and its spirit and that's why this tool has such a bad reputation because of the videos we see out there today and we have to combat that and we need more people putting out good information and good videos doing the right thing by the animal the welfare of the animal and the owners has to be number one that's simple okay so that's very easy so now i'm going to keep practicing this five ten minutes several times a day doing this stuff for anywhere from say two to five to seven days, the conditioning process, where I'm teaching the dog what that stimulation means. Now, once that stimulation is very understandable to the dog, the dog understands what it means. There's no more confusion. It's not perfect. The dog's not ready to go out to Times Square and be off leash, but the dog has a good understanding of it, okay? Now, this is where the real learning starts. 
this is where we move into the intermittent phase, where we use the four different combinations while we're teaching the dog. This is where the dog learns to respond, whether the e-collar is on or not, because let's face it, guys, we want the dog to listen in the long run to the verbal command, not always to have to rely on a tool or electronics. Plain and simple. If your dog does not listen to the verbal command, is it really trained? In my opinion, no, it's not. You have to have the dog listen to the verbal command. And a lot of people fail achieving that because they fail in this section. So I'm gonna explain the four combinations in the intermittent phase. This is the phase where you could take as long as you want. Okay, there is no time frame here. This is where we start adding some distraction, adding some distance to the commands adding some duration to the commands. This is where we sharpen the dog up and the real learning takes place. This is where we start going out in public and practicing, okay? Let's go over the four combinations for you guys that don't understand what I'm talking about, all right? So the first combination is going to be, we're gonna use the recall, I'm gonna use the e-collar and a reward, just like I've been doing, okay? So again, it looks like this. I press the OG here, yes, I reach in, I reward, okay? just like you guys have seen. Now, the second combination is gonna be e-collar, no reward. So I'm not going to mark it, there's not going to be a reward. It's going to look like this. Give me a little space, Dioji. I press Dioji here, and I want her here. So I didn't say nothing, okay? I didn't say nothing. She's to remain here until I release her, which means free dog. Now she's free to go. Again, if your dog doesn't have a strong release command, that's a problem. Because if your dog doesn't have a strong release command, then it's very difficult for the dog to understand when it is to remain in command. So your dogs have to have a strong release command. When you say break or free, whatever you use, the dog should just fly out of it and be excited to be a dog, okay? Very simple. That was the second combination. E-collar, no reward. Third combination is no e-collar with the reward. It looks like this. The OG here, yes, okay, good, no reward, right? The fourth combination is no e-collar, no reward. So we're hanging out, we're taking our time, the OG's giving me space, the OG here, good, good job, the OG. And the dog's to remain with you, okay? Walk away from me, uh-uh, here. I correct it immediately with the verbal marker, uh-uh, I want the dog here, free dog. Now she's free to go about. Okay, that's the fourth combination. You don't do them in order, you don't have to do one at a time, but you mix that up. Guys, this is where the learning in the dog's brain goes and they start really taking it in and excelling. And then that's where we can start adding distractions. That's where we can start adding the, the duration and the distance. That's where the real learning takes place, okay? Before the dog is truly trained. So let's go over the four combinations real quick, one more time with the place command. E-collar, no reward, okay? Press, the OG, place. Yes. Reach in, reward. Good job. Now remember, she's free to get off of that because I marked it and rewarded. That's an active release, okay? Now, this is gonna be E-collar, no reward. The OG, place. Good. Good job, the OG. Now, she, uh -uh. she needs to remain up there. Okay, now there's gonna be times I interrupt that and stop it. There's gonna be other times I allow it because I want her to truly understand what I want. So go ahead and break that position, Sophia. Uh-uh, place, good job, okay? I'm gonna allow both. I'm gonna interrupt it and I'm also gonna be a little slow and let the dog get off. That's how the dog's going to truly learn, okay? Free dog, now she's free to get off there. So again, third combination, no e-collar reward. Dioji, place. Yes, okay, good job. Now you notice, the OG, the name comes first, place, and then the hand signal. That's the timing of it. When she gets up there, yes, and then the hand moves. Very important, guys. The fourth combination, no e-collar, no reward. The OG, place, good. And now I want her holding it. And then we start adding some duration and some distance, right? So I'm moving around her, I'm turning my back, I'm making like I'm gonna go away. That'll usually get the dog to get off, and that's where you go, uh-uh, I'm put him back. So you start adding little things like that to make the dog assume, okay, I'm supposed to follow them. And then when they do so, uh-uh, you put him back. 
very important. Those are the four combinations. Free dog, good job. Very, very nice, okay? So that's hopefully a quick enough overview for you guys. That's what we're doing during the conditioning phase and the intermittent phase. Now, one of the questions I get a lot is, they'll talk about, okay, do I have to condition every command? No, guys, this isn't about the obedience. So once we're done with the conditioning phase, where the dog truly starts to understand the stimulation and you move into that intermittent phase, then you can start implementing the e-collar with the simple basic commands that the dog knows, like sit and down, okay? Very easy. If your dog doesn't have a strong down and hesitates, work on the down through positive reinforcement without the e-collar. Don't add the e-collar until you really have to. But here's the thing, guys. With my own personal dogs, people like the way my dogs look. I do very little e-collar work with my dogs. In other words, what I mean is, once I do all the training to teach them with the e-collar, you really never see my dogs with e-collars on where I have to reinforce behaviors. I just don't, because the training is very tight and very strong. If I go out in public or I'm gonna be in a place where my dogs are off leash and there may be things that I worry about, the dog's going to have an e-collar on, no matter what. You have to prepare for what if. So that's a very big question I get. When it comes to stopping unwanted behaviors, I know a lot of people put the e-collar on and go right to punishment. I think it's awful, I think it's terrible. It gives us all a bad name, including the tool, okay? I do not correct the dog with the e-collar until there's a strong relationship there between me and the dog and a very strong understanding of the e-collar by the dog. And what happens, guys, when I have a dog here for three weeks, very rarely do I have to correct the dog. That's just a fact. I'm not anti-corrections, I'm not anti-punishment. But when the training is right and the dog gets it, you'll find yourself using less and less punishment and training. And so it's very rare that I have to use an e-collar to correct a dog's behavior while it's here. And any of my clients will tell you that. And I'm in contact with them daily. When I do, the owner knows it. I explain the situation. I tell them exactly how it happened and exactly what I did. It's very, very important to be clear to people and so that they see everything. But when it all comes down to it, guys, the dogs don't lie. They don't lie. So you're never going to see a dog that I train with the e-collar plastered to a place board for hours on end down like mashed potatoes. It doesn't happen, okay? It doesn't happen. The dogs don't lie. If you look at the dog, it's going to tell you what the training was like. It's that simple. So everyone has to learn how to open their mind and don't fall for all the smoke and mirrors. You don't go for before and afters. We want to see work. Everyone deserves to see the work and the dogs deserve to be treated properly and so do the owners. It's that simple. I can go on forever and film this for two hours, but it's very hot for Dioji. It's very hot for my beautiful camera woman that's filming. It is hot out here today, but I said to them, guys, I really feel like we need to do this now. And Sophia has play practice tonight and all other things, so we had to do it in the heat of the day. I hope the video comes out clear enough because it's so bright, but I didn't want to wait because there's too many things going around right now, guys, that's destroying the industry. And I never want to be part of that. I want to do my small part in elevating the industry, doing what's right by the animal. That's simple. I will never give anti-tool or anti-e-collar people the ammunition to come after me. And they don't. They may after this video because they said that, but the truth is they don't come after me because I don't give them reason to because it's very hard for them to say that I'm mistreating or abusing animals. They can't do it. They can't do it, guys. And that should be the goal for everyone. So, Dioji, can you think of anything that I left out when it comes to the e-collar training? I don't start my dogs. A couple of my own dogs I started at five months old, guys, but I've been doing this a long time, okay? I don't start clients' dogs at five months old. I just don't like it. I know people do 12 weeks old, don't like it. I don't like it, okay? Take some time to build the relationship, build the dog up, build the foundation very strong. Wait at least six, seven, eight months old before you start the e-collar training on a dog. That's just my opinion. I know a lot of people are gonna disagree with, and that's okay. That's just me, okay? That's just me. Luca didn't start till he was nine months old. And that was only because I knew it was time because he started getting a little reactive with people passing the house. 
and he's a scary dog that's what led me to know okay it's time I start because I still want him to have that freedom off leash but at the same time I can't allow any accidents I have to be responsible so that that allowed me to continue to give Luca the freedom wherever we went off leash including in front of my home when he was young okay and so is as tense as Luca is I've never had to correct him high on an e-collar never and he works on the number two number three super low levels even in drive so forget all these myths about you need more e-collar if you need more e-collar you need more training you're not ready to use this that's it okay peace